to get the Miracle Run started right here in the Grand Arena in the Blind Pick. Yeah, Method Black with a little bit of a surprise. Swapsy on the Destruction Warlock taking a page from Cloud9. They're going to be blocking in the Frost Mage Destruction Warlock Restoration Druid. Never lucky. This is a composition they have ran into time and time again. When they play against Cloud9, normally it doesn't go their way. So potentially this is a great Blind Pick for Method Black. We'll have to see what Never Lucky in terms of strategy really has prepared. They are very experienced in this matchup, so they might have a potential all-in available at some point. This is really interesting, because I was actually, I was watching Method Black uh, in the player practice area yesterday when they were playing some of their matches, and they have been putting hours and hours on end into this Mage Lock Druid composition, clearly inspired by Cloud9's success over in North America. But, I mean, I talked to Looney, and Looney doesn't respect Swapsy on Warlock at all. He thinks, by comparison to, say, Channels, there's just, like, no comparison to be made there. One of the interesting things is that Swapsy's actually not running the Mortal Coil. You see it there. He's using the the portal uh, for the Warlock, which is going to give him more mobility and basically a counter to Valido's Death Grips, which kind of put him out of position. He's able to reposition himself in the middle, and they'll go for this kind of, you know, teeing off on Valido strategy. Yep, Swapsy, interesting talent choice with the Demonic Circle. It definitely makes the all-ins from Never Lucky a lot less valuable. I think for Swapsy, even if he isn't the most experienced, this is a player that has multi-classed a lot in the past. And if you have two players to back you up on Mage Restoration Druid, Raikou and Chaz, definitely among the best you could possibly have. A nice attempt here by Never Lucky, pushing in on Swapsy as he uses the Demonic Circle to move into the midfield once again. Raikou soaking some damage, getting an interrupt on Colo, but at this point in the game, with these particular classes, I think it's really unlikely that Method Black can really push in and sort of run down Never Lucky. If this is the strategy we see a little bit later on in the game, Never Lucky will slowly but surely fall apart, but I think Never Lucky, they know their timing. They know exactly what they need to do. They're going to be gripping in Swapsy consistently, looking for some burst damage, nice ring of peace to knock Swapsy away from his demonic circle. And if they can do that later on, Chaz is really going to struggle to keep him alive. Yeah, the, the, the strategy for Never Lucky is basically they need dampening to take down this Destro Warlock. The Destruction Warlocks do a lot of healing through the Soul Leech. Uh, it makes them very tanky early game, but of course, as that healing reduction comes in, it's not only for the healers, it's also for those DPS, meaning that Swapsy uh, will struggle to keep himself alive more and more as this game continues. That's why you see this kind of turtling strategy. Valido and Zack, they're both going to be playing very close to this pillar, uh, able to line of sight both the Frost Bolts from Raikou, but also the Chaos Bolts coming in from Swapsy. We see that in Infernal, it's a huge cooldown coming out of the Destruction Wall. Like, let's see what Method Black can do with it. Yeah, it looks like the Life Cocoon will be traded up by Colo, overlapped with the anti-magic shell of Valido. Now there is an attempt, but that was the Infernal from Swapsy, so a lot of the potential burst damage now committed by Method Black, and Neverlock is going to be feeling relatively healthy if they can survive that Infernal. Raikou dropping out a Frozen Orb, basically cleaving down all three members. The Frozen Orb and the Blizzard don't do the most damage in the early stages of the game with the amount of healing, the Death Knight, the Windwalker, and the Mistweaver really have available, but in these situations where Neverlock is forced to cross the map, that's when they become vulnerable. Valido, if he gets caught in the midfield for too long, at the black with Raikou and Swapsy, will be able to get that precious cast of damage off, potentially take him down. I, it, this is a really interesting one, because when the two teams war games, I think Never Lucky were kind of testing the waters a little bit. They were just playing from the start, you know, not hugging the pillar uh, until dampening started. And Method Black won almost every single game backstage when that was happening. But now that Never Lucky are really going, you know, tournament mode, this is the live game on the big stage, they're they're just sitting behind the pillar until dampening starts. And I actually think the DK Windwalker, if they can keep good mana on Colo, which they are doing, if they can keep the leader alive until about 20, 30%, they will win with an all-in on Swapsy at some point in this game. They won't be able to keep him alive. Valido needs to be a bit careful here. We see those Maldux coming in, one of the big win conditions, of course, since we don't have those PVE trinkets available on the tournament server. But, I mean, he should be okay. Colo trades out the Life Cocoon. Without the dampening, it's going to be very hard to take down this Death Knight. Yep, that is for sure. Where the crane gets activated by Colo. They're looking to get really aggressive on Swapsy. He has his Dark Soul available using the Demonic Circle to port in the midfield once again. Are they going to chase? Valido actually grips him back. Colo caught into a full polymorph. Valido could be in a little bit of trouble. No anti-magic shell really available. Zack trying to get some pressure, now falling back, throwing some heals, really helping Colo out by topping off Valido. And in that exchange, although Colo sat a full polymorph into another half DR polymorph, Valido was full HP by the end of it. So that really shows some of the self-healing that these classes do have available. And now, See Method Black still with Valido in midfield. Do you have an opportunity? A beautiful blink counter spell landed by Raikou. Valido in some trouble. Chaos Bolt does land. Once again, never lucky.
forced to retreat to the pillar. That was some big cooldowns forced out though. The icebound fortitude from Valido, a beautiful blink counter spell from Raikou, denying any heals coming out from Kolo. And now they're starting to feel the pressure from Meta Black, this experienced veteran team coming out of Europe. Raikou just playing so aggressively. He knows he can afford to. He'll never be the kill target. That Frost Mage so slippery. He's got the Icy Veins active right now, trying to get out as much damage as possible. But honestly, Kolo is dealing with this like a champ. His mana is fantastic. The whole team contributing, of course, the leader of the Death Strike, Zach, with those Vivifies, just trying to keep the team as high health as possible without taxing Kolo. And it's looking fantastic for them. Going into dampening, I think Never Lucky have survived this pressure like absolute pros. Yeah, look at mana. Kolo way ahead. Chaz at some point might have to sneak away for a drink. This might be the moment where Never Lucky really pushes. Softsy Cotton midfield already using his demonic circle. Zach Valido all over him. Cola with the way of the crane available. Will he decide to use it now into a full polymorph? Raku getting some counter pressure for his team. Valido forced to trade out the anti magic shell. Stay aggressive, but he does manage to hold on. And this is trouble time for Swapsy. This is big trouble. And I mean, the mana on Chaz isn't looking great either. He trades out his trinket. There's no wall available for a couple seconds because of that lockout. They're trying to counter pressure Valido, though. This is still early days in terms of dampening. So an early push from Nether Lucky here. Meta Black will try to counter that, of course, with Raikou free casting in the back line. Those frost bolts coming crashing in on Valido. Good stun. Leg sweep coming in from Zach, though, to deny some of that counter pressure. Swapsy now without his trinket. And I mean, that was the touch of death go, yes, but both those trinkets won't rotate up in time for Meta Black. This next touch of death could be a big push for, I mean, for Never Lucky to potentially win this one. Yeah, Chaz going to be sitting in stealth, potentially looking for a drink. He was around 30% mana. We'll have to see just how much mana he can recover. Never Lucky sort of in a defensive situation right now. Cole trying to keep himself alive, but big pressure from Raikou, getting on a lot of cast. Gladiator safeguard will proc. Zach and Valido backing him up. Now Swapsy gets gripped in. Good pressure here for Never Lucky, although Swapsy doesn't seem to be taking too much damage. Chaz able to completely reset his mana, and at 12% dampening, that is the exact situation you want to be in as Method Black. Yeah, it's definitely something that the Mage Lock Druid will always be enabled. Any map, pretty much, the rest of Druid can just kind of run off go for those drinks. It's very difficult for the melees to stop because of the Frost Mage's slows, right? It's hard for them to cross the map, deny Chaz of those drinks. And a well played, good situation for Method Black. They push in a little bit, get that. So now they have the reset. It's what they need. But at some point, the Restoration Druid will just struggle to heal through, especially with Maldix. Uh, Swapsy's going to have to play this one very well. He does have the portal. Actually uses it preemptively, uses it before the death grip. So now they're going to have very good uptime over on him. Could have been a slight mistake there from Swapsy, and that's been the kind of question mark here is, how is Swapsy on this Warlock? We've seen him on so many classes. We haven't seen the Warlock too much from him. Can he play to the level of Channimals? If he can, they'll surely win. Yeah, I think they are going to be in a good situation, but never lucky. They might be able to exploit any weaknesses. There's a full Seduce on Nicolo into a full Polymorph. Now Valido could be in a little bit of trouble with no anti-magic shell available. If Raikou, Swapsy, and Chaz have the Gladiator's Maledix available, that is all the damage that they really need. Second Chaos Bolt might land on Valido. Looks like Life Cocoon will be enough. Bash, Chaz moving in with crowd control on Nicolo. Raikou looking for a Polymorph, finds it on the Zack. Polo out of crowd control, deciding to use his way of the crane, but Valido still in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and actually the Cataclysm there from Swapsy was kind of wasted, just using it into the way of the crane. He's easily going to heal through that. He's in a little bit of trouble right now, gets gripped away from the gateway. They're looking to get aggressive. Touch of death is committed from Zack. Never lucky, looking to get the kill here, potentially. Chaz has burned through his mana that he just restored so quickly, trying to keep his Warlock alive. The Destruction Warlock has no real way of getting away from these melees. They even knock him out of the shroom to deny their effervescence. Chaz, once again, looking for a drink here. Kind of disrespecting Never Lucky, but it looks like he's going to get away with it so much mana. He needs to get back to Swapsy, though, and stabilize, because otherwise they could fall far behind here. Yeah, there's a full leg sweep. What are they going to be able to get done? Kolo gets interrupted into a full polymorph. Raikou just really doing a great job in this matchup so far. They need the damage on Valido, but Anti-Magic Shell once again will deny the damage. Now Valido going to be a little bit vulnerable, caught in midfield. Swapsy's been able to hold on to his unending resolve this entire game, even when Chaz manages to sneak away, but it's do or die. Windwalker Deathlight just does so much single target damage, and at 26% dampening, I don't know Ch how Chaz is going to be able to hold on. Yeah, and Swapsy actually gets interrupted there. He can't use the wall. It looks like he might be able to hold on to it. Every single time Chaz regens his mana, look how quickly he burns through it once again. Another way of the crane coming in from Kolo. Excellent peels from Raikou, as always. Raikou, of course, fantastic on that mage. You wouldn't want anyone else in that position right now. Zach with the re connect over onto Swapsy, and I mean, Swapsy keeps using his uh, his portal and then just gets gripped back on it. I really... Uh, 
the game, but at the same time, huge burst onto Belido. That was the uh, Infernals, I do believe, from Swapsy. They didn't retreat on it, and Meta Black able to pull through. A day for Cool Tiras. Will it also be a day for Meta Black? That's what we're looking to see. This is the blind pick from Meta Black here. The Windwalker, the Frost Mage, the Restoration Druid. They had a good win rate with this going through Cup 5, Cup 6 of the spring season. It kind of became one of those default compositions for them. Wise, of course, Wise Walker. Uh, something he's played on the ladder a lot, but never lucky. They got the counter pick. They bring in the Moonkin Demon. And Hunter, and again, if they can survive, they will have the mana, you know, the mana in their favor because of that Demon Hunter. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Pack Rat's going to be the main target of choice, and that is one of the disadvantages for the Moonkin. You put a lot of pressure on a Moonkin like Pack Rats, it forces them into bear form, which really limits the amount of crowd control as well as the amount of damage he is able to do. But so far, Colo able to easily keep him alive. And things are looking decently well for Never Lucky. Packrats uh, deciding to use that incarnation to get really aggressive. Chaz, Raikou, and Waz sort of in full retreat. Zach once again landing a mana rift onto Chaz. If we look at that mana advantage, it is sort of in favor of Never Lucky at this point. Yeah, we've talked about Zach a lot already throughout this tournament. I mean, this guy really is putting on his best Trill cosplay right now. A young player comes in, brings out the Demon Hunter, looks for the burns over on Chaz. And I mean, another class coming out of him. Packrats with the incarnation right now. Probably not going to be able to achieve too much with that. You can see Chaz line of sighting intelligent. He's actually playing the Feral Affinity into the Demon Hunter, which is a, a bold pick since he knows Zach will be chasing after him. He's very confident in his gameplay here, uh, just trying to deny those mana burns for as long as possible but ultimately the onus is on Meta Black they need to find a way of breaking the defense of Never Lucky because you can see Chaz is already down to 50% of his mana bar yeah and it's going to be really difficult on a map like this to actually sneak away for a drink right now Meta Black making an attempt on Colo and Chaz manages to sneak away he's in the starting room right now can he recover that precious mana Zach trying desperately to shut Beautiful. that down I think Chaz actually actually wasn't he didn't get too much mana back there that was nicely done by Never Lucky realizing the situation making sure Method Black can't get their mana back. Yeah, I, I actually thought that was a really nice setup for Method Black. You know, they did the swap over onto Kolo, forced the DPS to come back and peel. We even saw the Ring of Peace to try help Chaz get some mana, but it's such a small map. It's an intelligent pick from Never Lucky. They know exactly what they're playing for here. You know, they've got the small map. It's going to be hard for the drinks from Chaz, and Zach will just chase him down. Wherever that Druid goes, he must follow on this Demon Hunter. But it is a difficult Chaz, uh, difficult... Uh, Thing yeah. to pursue because you know Raikou and Wise have been doing such a good job of just shutting him down as much as possible. Yeah, definitely a really difficult task. Chaz now into an imprisonment. Raikou getting bursted down. Good damage here for Never Lucky. Looking good in game number two on hook point. What is Method Black going to be able to do? They thought that the Windwalker Frost Mage Restoration Druid would be wow. their best bet in a blind pick, but right now, Never Lucky, they seem to have an answer. Chaz on the ropes, trying to run away. Farskin gets committed behind the pillar with a regrowth. Will manage to survive, but that was a very uh, very close call for Chaz. Zach once again trying to hunt down Chaz in this matchup. Good pressure on a pack grass. Colo gets interrupted. Pack rat could be a little bit of trouble, but in that moon or sorry in the bear form as a moonkin with bark skin it is going to be very difficult for meth the black to actually take down that moonkin yeah i just i don't i don't see them killing the moonkin before dampening he's just going to be too tanky especially against the windwalker he has so much armor when he goes over into bear form and i mean i actually just think this is a brilliant draft from Co from never lucky and colo's team colo himself is even playing the restoration druid with the renewal talent because he knows he's the only real opening in this matchup before they get the mana it's going to be those swaps over onto colo he's playing the which is a little bit bold, but he's just been playing the game so magnificently so far. You can see Chaz's mana bar down to about 15%. Zach just needs to keep a good job of maintaining pressure on Chaz. With that Feral Affinity, he can even get some burn damage, force some healing out that way as well. And I mean, beyond some sort of miracle, this game is looking fantastic for the North American squad. Yeah, this is Raikou's Icy Veins. Wasn't able to really pull any defenses from Never Lucky during that exchange, just really showing how durable the composition Never Lucky has drafted here today. Chaz with his Innovate, looking to get some healing out, but everyone topped off. Not going to get too much value. Chaz with a beautiful bash on Colo into a full Cyclone. Boss taking a little bit of burst damage, a little bit of pressure on Packrats as well. Looks like Method Black, they're trying to find a new target, potentially going after Zach in this matchup now, as Packrats has proved to be a little bit too tanky. But as I say that, Leg Sweep is committed. 
damage on pack wrap, but it looks like never like be able to easily heal through that setup. Yeah, they actually did force the trinket from pack rats there before the touch of death, so maybe there's an opening if they can you know catch him in a stun in Moonkin form, look for something big. But first they have to survive this incarnation, the big three-minute damage cooldown coming out of pack rats on Never Lucky. He's teeing off on Raikou a little bit right now. Raikou just gonna back off. Obviously, he doesn't want Chaz to have to spend too much mana. Chaz actually sitting down for a drink, I believe, right now. Can Zach get over to him? Doesn't look like he's focusing on it. He's actually just attacking Raikou right now. Raikou's gonna happily trade out his ice block for a bit of mana on his healer. Chaz able to get a little bit, but honestly, not enough to maybe justify it. And they're just falling further and further behind in this one, Ben. Yeah, Raikou already down one ice block in this matchup. Dampening just kicking in, and Chaz is almost completely tapped on mana. When you look at Colo, he's at 50%. At the black, they need a miracle attempt. Like you said, Packers, he doesn't have a trinket. They could potentially try to take him down with a touch of death all in, but Waz has been holding on to that for quite some time. Raikou looking for an Ebon Bolt. Decent damage on Packrats, managing to Shadow Meld, one of the Gladiators, Maledix, and all of these teams showcasing just how powerful that Shadow Meld racial really is against that Maledic trinket. You can use it to completely nullify the effect, and that way your healer can just heal easily without having to really deal with that effect. Chaz once again trying to sneak away for a drink, but this is desperation mode for Method Black. I don't know how much time they have left. Yeah, it doesn't seem like too much. You can see Dampening starting to ramp up now. 5% healing reduction for all of the teams. Chaz completely dry. Waz being exposed just a little bit. And I mean, this is a matchup that we've actually seen before in Europe, a very similar one at least. Uh, the Pumpers, Drainers team, ran this sort of composition into Method Black. They had the uh, Death Knight instead of the Demon Hunter, but this kind of really tanky Moonkin with a really Really tanky melee and method black struggled against that they actually ended up losing that cup i think it was cup two of the spring season so method black have you know struggled with this sort of matchup in the past hopefully they've got something prepared if they do end up losing down in this one but chaz just constantly going for those drinks he's trying to sneak away but colo in hot pursuit he knows exactly what chaz's tricks are and he's looking to shut them down once again Chaz sitting in cat form hasn't started drinking just yet so he's been in self for a long time but hasn't had an opportunity to actually go for that drink he might actually be getting it right now. Zach trying to chase him down. Chaz might have recovered a lot of his mana. That was going to be huge for Method Black. He was able to do that, but no. Unfortunately, not finding the drink. Packrats was just too close to reveal where he was in stealth. And never luck, he's still looking good. But this is a nice attempt on the Packrats. He's forced to trink it out. Caught in a bear form. This is touch of death rolling. Huge damage ticking on the Packrats. Colo caught into a full polymorph. Iron Bark no longer available. Never lucky. They could trip on the finish line. They have everything going their way. But there's just a lot of pressure. This is a great setup from Method Black. Will never lucky be able to recover? Cover. Yeah, it was an intelligent play from Neverlucky trading out, but they're still under pressure. The darkness came out from Zach. They still have the bark skin, but Packrats gets interrupted. Now the full cycle in onto Colo. This could be big trouble. We see the bark skin coming out from Packrats. He still has that renewal. We should heal him for a fair bit. I'd like to see him just trade it out, to be honest. They're falling behind here. They're not able to get the mana burns because Zach is having to concentrate on peeling. Chaz could maybe sneak away here, but they're going for the kill. They know this is the potential opportunity for them. They won't get many of these. The renewal comes out. Huge heal onto Packrats, but crowd control still on Colo, unbelievable from Meta Black, the EU number one, able to turn this game from absolutely nothing, I thought. And when we did talk to Never Lucky, they said they did have a few strategies, a few tricks up their sleeve in this particular matchup. They're quite comfortable, but have they played against a team as high caliber as Meta Black? They've looked so good in the first two games. Never Lucky really has their work cut out ahead of them. Yeah, and I mean, Never Lucky, like, we commend them on their composition diversity. They played 14 unique compositions throughout the spring season, but almost 50% of their total games were as this comp. This really is their strongest comp. It's what got them to this LAN, and I'm not too unhappy to see them loading it in against Meta Black in game three here. They've got to try, try their chances, as Rich alluded to. The series is definitely not looking great for them right now, and I mean, these guys are some of the best at this composition, so we'll have to see what those strategies are. I'm very excited because, like we've said time and time again, Colo just comes up with weird stuff, and Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and we'll have to see if it is going to pay off for them in game number three. Upper bracket lives on the line right now. If they lose this, they will be sent down to the lower bracket to play a little bit later on today. Method Black, of course, ex as most people expected, doing quite well in this series. Currently up 2-0, to zero, really showing dominance. And I think with this particular draft, they do have an edge in this matchup. We'll have to see what Neverlucky can get done. Interrupt now on Nicolo. Zach going to be portaling away behind the pillar. 
been doing a good job with that transcendence. Anytime he's in trouble, portaling behind the pillar, allowing Cole a little bit of time to recover his health. I, I actually really like it when there's a split strategy coming out against the Frost Mages, because the Frost Mages rely so much on, you know, Blizzard, Frozen Orb, hitting double melee. It can actually be a fair bit of damage from these Frost Mages. Uh, maybe they'll opt for something like that. Zach, though, taking so much pressure right Ooh, now. Nice. Touch of death coming out from Waz. He's able to port down, actually duking Waz a little bit there. Nice plays coming in from Zach, showing what those NA Windwalkers are made of. He holds on to the touch of Karma because of that nice defensive play. Yeah, the crackling Jade Lightning, well positioned by Zach, forcing Waz to get knocked off the side, uh, really denying that touch of death go from Method Black. So very well played, high level Windwalker gameplay coming in from Zach. Pulling out the way the crane, looking to get aggressive. Are they going to be able to take down Waz? He's hiding away, trying to avoid some damage. Zach, once again, using his transcendence. Waz is basically chasing him down this entire match. You can see he's dropped his transcendence on top of Zach. So the next time Zach tries to get away, Waz is going to be able to portal right on top of him and keep up the aggression. It, it's, it's kind of a deceiving map, this one, because Dalaran Sewers is. Uh, it's somewhere where you would think the melee cleave has a bit of an advantage, but Chaz is just using the map so well. You know, he's playing the double tier with his wild charge, porting up to Raikou, even porting to a pet there uh, using that ability. And Zach, I mean, he's really struggling to have uptime. Chaz is doing a fantastic job. That said, though, gets caught out of form by that stun, forcing out Trinket and Barkskin. Touch of Death is coming up in about 30 seconds, Then This could be a huge opening for Never Lucky. Yeah, Chaz committing his Shadow Meld there as well. And as I kind of talked about Waz getting that transcendence down, Zach actually removed it to the other pillar. So Zach should be able to get a clean get out of jail free card with that ability if he really needs it. Whole nice polymorph game. secured onto Cola, but a beautiful preemptive life cocoon keeps Zach alive. Now Valido and Zach once again on top of Chaz looking for some damage. And like you kind of said, he's already committed the bark skin. He's already committed his trinket. If he gets caught into a leg sweep or an asphyxiate's done and all three members of Never Lucky can connect, Chaz is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, but the, I feel like they pulled the trigger a little bit fast there. Colo with the leg sweep, but his DPS unable to connect a beautiful cone of cold just slowing down Never Lucky on that onslaught there. Chaz moves completely freely. He's going to have his bark skin before that stun diminishing return returns. And that means he should be fine for now, to be honest. The touch of death still a little bit scary. He needs to be careful. You can see him camping that bear form right now. The increased armor, the increased health, the increased survivability. Now he uses the vortex to kite them downstairs. Avoids the death grip from Velido. Beautiful kiting from Chaz, but he has been caught out. Is it going to be enough for them to land the kill, though? It doesn't look like it. Velido, the huge outplay from Chaz, knocking him downstairs with the Ur Ursul's vortex, means he doesn't even trade the bark skin. Yeah, Chaz is going to be completely fine. Zach had used his fists of fury a little bit earlier on for the parry effect to deny some of the damage Waz had available. And then Chaz kind of read into that situation. He got caught into a stun, but there was really well, really no damage threat as Fist of Fury is the most important ability when Walker Monk has to get that damage rolling. Lido now on 40% health. This is where damage is starting to really roll for Method Black. And in terms of mana, Chaz is a little bit behind, but it's pretty even. Cole might have to actually sit down for a drink at some point. It's, it's even, and what's more, I think this matchup gets better and better for Method Black the longer it goes, because Dampling is going to start ramping up. You know, Valido is under pressure to constantly chase Chaz. He needs to, but uh -oh. I mean, uh, they, again, they, they commit the touch of death, but Chaz just pre-ports up. He, pre he ports to the, the soldier on the upper tier, meaning that both deep Yes, can't connect to him. Chaz is just toying with Never Lucky at this point in the game. Absolute godlike plays on this Restoration Druid. And despite that, the mana looking a little bit even. They need to get the pressure over onto Velido Method Black so they can secure this series. Yeah, Raikou has been on fire with his Polymorphs, with his Frost Novas in this matchup to keep Chaz alive. Zach commits the Light Sweep, trying to get some damage rolling onto Chaz. Beautiful split strategy coming in. I like Raikou, in Raikou into his first Ice Block. Never Lucky has completely stabilized. And Method Black, they're actually falling a little bit behind. I think this is smart. Instead of Zach going after Raikou and Valido going after Chaz, they've sort of switched their roles. Zach's been able to get more pressure onto Chaz, and you can see Valido, he's actually been able to deny some of the Frost Bolts, some of the Polymorphs that Raikou really has available. Yeah, it's what I said. I actually really like it when Melee Cleaves against Mage Druid, they start sw swapping it up a little bit. You know, Zach goes on Chaz, forcing him to keep Hotson himself. It, it means, firstly, the Druid has to split his healing, which is hard for him. It's going to cost mana. It's more rejuice, you know, more global spend on healing. But more importantly, it avoids, you know, the double, double orbs, the double leg sweeps coming out of Meta Black. I really like it when Zach looks for opportunities like that. We'll see if he can get more of them because Chaz now is out of mana, you know. Colo has a little bit. They do have the advantage in this matchup, theoretically. 
but they need to find some way of actually executing, you know, like the health bars on Method Black are barely moving at this point, they need to get some uptime. Zack has been doing a really good job with that crackling Jade Lightning. He's been denying Waz's Fist of Fury consistently throughout this matchup, and it's one of the reasons he has been able to keep himself alive, and Cole's been able to hold on to a lot of that precious mana. So, very well done. 10% dampening. Valido interrupts the Ray of Frost. Zack and Valido both turning their attention onto Raikou at this point, getting a beautiful triple leg sweep. Great pressure here for Never Lucky. Waz trinkets out. Wanted to avoid some of that incoming damage, but Never Lucky, they're on all three members. Raikou trying to deny some of that damage with the Temporal Shield. Has the Icy Banes available, but there's not too many openings for Method Black at this point. Yeah, I mean, Chaz did sit down for a drink for a little bit. He snuck away, so he's up to 30% mana. That's definitely uh, good for them. We see the touch death coming out from Zack. I'm not even 100% sure who it's on. It looks like it might have been used on Raikou there, but it didn't really achieve too much. Maybe a good Temporal Shield coming out. Now we see the stun since Raikou trinketed earlier. Good Iron Bark. Innovate. This is huge healing from Chaz. The Innovate makes all of these heals completely free. You can see they're bushing for it. The Maldic's coming in. Maldic, the huge counter to the rest of the I'd love to see the ice block. Ooh, that was very close for Raikou. Trades out that defensive cooldown. Now Kolo falling behind. The counter spell coming out. Valido also low. Waz actually swapping uh -oh. over to Kolo. This could potentially be Ed. Does have the life cocoon. Will he survive the stun? Yeah, we'll definitely have to see. Kolo manages to get out of the bash, gets the life cocoon on himself, and does manage to survive. But now with Waz training him down, Kolo doesn't have too many answers. He has his transcendence, but almost no mana left. Life cocoon not available. No fortifying brew. Manages to land paralysis, land that enveloping miss, and keep himself alive. But unfortunately, that waterfall Ooh. will deny, and Raikou lands a beautiful counter spell. Double leg sweep, though. Good backup from Zack, allowing them to get some momentum under Raikou. And keep in mind, Raikou, he has no ice block, so he is incredibly vulnerable. Kolo, though, this may be the end for him and Never Lucky as he's getting lower and lower. No life cocoon. He has to hold on just a little bit longer. Can Waz reconnect? A beautiful ring of peace does deny the mobility from Waz, but Waz finally reconnecting. Kolo may have ran out of time. Yeah, Kolo is definitely looking really dead. <laughs> the Mighty Bash comes in, there's the Frozen Orb, and that will be 3-0 in favor of the veterans of the European number one seed, Method Black. Feed versus the fake Zebras, we're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.